Welcome to Bristol Sport TV from Ashton Gate Sports Bar. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll be bringing you all the latest from your favourite sporting club. Now, I'm delighted to be joined by midfield maestro Corey Smith from Bristol City. Corey, thanks for, thanks for being here. No worries. What were the reflections in the change room after, after the game? Was it one of frustration? Was it a sense that there was something left out there on the park? Um, yeah, it was a little bit frustrating because obviously we wanted to get the three points. Um, I mean, they didn't really have many chances, but we obviously conceded a bit of a sloppy goal and uh, like a bit of a mistake. So um, at a frustrating time and when you play a team like Rotherham, they'll, once they do get that goal, they'll just sit in and they're not really bothered about trying to score another one. So um, yeah, it was, uh, it was frustrating, but to be fair, Rotherham have won five and drawn one out of their last six games. So uh, a point where it wasn't a bad result, uh, especially with other teams losing. With so many teams so close to each other in that bottom half of the table, is it hard to just focus on your job and your game or is it easy to, to look at how other results are going? Yeah, I mean, me personally, I can't help but <laughs> kind of look at the tables. I'll, look, I'll be there, I'll be looking at, at the other team's fixtures and obviously, uh, just, but obviously the main thing is that we concentrate on, our, on ourselves and get the wins ourselves. But if other teams can lose in the way, then it always helps. <laughs> And it's a tight-knit spirit in that group and that was shown on Tuesday evening with the way the boys battled back. I mean, it's a, it's a good group to be part of and this is the sort of atmosphere and environment that you need to, to get yourself out of a, a relegation predicament. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's uh, a couple of weeks ago when the boys played Fulham, obviously I didn't play. We went down nil down to come back and win 2-1 away from home there. And obviously we've had some good results, obviously a couple of bad ones as well, but we've been on a generally good form. So. Um, yeah, like I said, that result uh, showed good character. We came back against a team that has been holding big teams, beating teams like Derby 3-4-0 and uh, holding leads. So to come back against them, uh, we showed great character and how much we won it. During your spell on the sidelines, are you one of those guys that can watch the teammates and, and you're pretty chilled about it? Or are you up on your feet? Are you screaming? Yeah, no, it's, it's very hard as a, as a player to not, not be involved at all, even uh, missing training, missing uh, just being around the changing room, you know, being in that physio room on your own is not really fun. Uh, so you just miss the kind of being around the boys and obviously when you're watching the games you just want to be out there helping them. But it was a hard time but uh, hopefully my body's a bit more rested and I can come back for the last five, six games. And I know it's talked about a lot but playing at Ashton Gate and it almost being a sellout every time you're here. 15,000 passionate Bristolians, that must mean so much to the players. Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, when they get behind us, it's, it helps us so much. And um, uh, obviously when the, when the stadium's fully built, it'll be even better. So yeah, um, we appreciate uh, the fans. And even to be fair, when we was losing a lot of games on the bounce, fans are absolutely brilliant. They was uh, still clapping us off the pitch and that really helped us to kind of get an, a run going because they were still behind us, you know? So. Um, yeah, we appreciate the fans a lot. And the business end of the season now, but I'm sure you won't be looking any further than Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, we've got a, another massive game. I mean, five, six games left, so we just have to take literally each one as it goes now. And uh, hopefully we can secure that safety as quickly as possible and uh, try and climb and see how, how high we can finish. Just finally, on a personal note, you've recently become a father. Has that changed your outlook on football, on your career? Um, obviously, it's, yeah, it's an amazing feeling and uh, obviously you, you, you don't just do it for yourself now. Obviously, you have your, I have my son to do it for and my, and my missus, so yeah, it does a little bit. You, uh, you, you want to provide for them, so um, yeah, of course, but I always try 100% when I play anyway, so um, it hasn't changed anything in that note. Corey Smith, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you. Cheers. And Bristol City face Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday at Ashton Gate. That one's a sellout, but you can follow all the action via BCFC tweets and on the official website. Now on to rugby, and Bristol confirmed their place at the top of the championship with victory over London Scottish on Saturday. Here's Tom Vaux with more. Warm sunshine welcomed Bristol to Richmond for their penultimate away fixture on Saturday. While playoff contenders Yorkshire Carnegie kicked off against last year's relegated club next door, Bristol were focused on securing that top spot for the third successive year. Two penalties from Morgan secured an early six points for the visitors, and the first try came soon after, when Scottish gave away another penalty in their own half. Quick thinking from our Scott allowed Wallace to escape down the wing unopposed. With Morgan receiving treatment, it fell to Wallace to convert his own score, which he did with aplomb. 
Following the half-time break with the scores locked at 6-16, Jack Lamb was strong enough to keep his feet from going dead to grab Bristol's only other try. Neat hands and organisation from Roberts and himself added the five points. Sean Holly spoke post-match of the positives from the much-changed squad. 13 changes from last week. Uh, we got some boys out there who were in desperately need of some rugby. And you can see we were, we were pretty disjointed. We lacked a bit of cohesion throughout the game. Um, but, you know, look, we're pleased that we've come through the game with a win against a pretty uh, tough Scottish team, heavy pack, and uh, with no injuries, which is very important for us. It's another win. You know, we remain undefeated away from home this season. And so I suppose the, uh, the overall objective is, um, is fulfilled. But, yeah, you know, disappointed with some aspects of our performance. And there's no rugby this weekend, but Bristol Rugby are back in action next Friday with Mosley the Visitors at Ashton Gate. And with the playoffs fast approaching, you can take advantage of our unique playoff bundle offer available online from Monday. Buy your semi-final ticket and get the final ticket free should Bristol progress. Full details are available on the website now. And now on to basketball. Bristol Flyers fans were in for a shock last week when Aidan Flint, Bristol City defender, joined on a dual contract. Of course, this was just an elaborate April Fool's joke, but Flint seemed to think otherwise. Really talented. I, I don't know. I didn't get picked up earlier, for most. And obviously, you go straight into the squad to play league leaders, Newcastle Eagles, and then straight away on Saturday, you're off the hole. It's a big weekend for you, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I just have to get a good night's sleep Friday after the uh, the big basketball game, and hopefully, uh, be uh, fit and raring to go ready for for Hull on, 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 on Saturday. Like, yeah. Well, the Flyers may have been without Aidan Flint in Friday's defeat to the Newcastle Eagles, but were also without leading scorer Cardell McFarland who was recovering from a concussion suffered against the Leicester Riders. Five players finished in double digits for the Eagles, while the Flyers were led by Tyrone Lee's 19 points and 15 rebounds. The team face another doubleheader this weekend as they return home on Saturday night against the Worcester Wolves, before travelling down the M5 just 24 hours later to face South West rivals, the Plymouth Raiders. And limited tickets for Saturday's game against Worcester are still available. Tip-off is at half past seven. Just head to the website for more details. Bristol Sport Racing's Dino Zamparelli started the season with a win and another podium at Brands Hatch. We caught up with him at the stadium. Yeah, it was a good start to the year really. We, um, we started uh, in practice quite strong. We were quickest in practice, so that was good um, at Brands Hatch. And then, yeah, we just kind of went through the weekend, uh, managed to qualify on the front row with second, just, just missed out a little bit on qualifying on pole. We just lost a little bit of race pace. You know, we were fast over one lap, but over the course of 34 laps, um, we were just missing a little bit of pace to really put the leader under pressure. Um, but as I said to the team, you know, we can't be too unhappy with that. Uh, a win in a second, two fastest laps, um, and a smidgen off pole position. So we've got a lot to build on, a lot to work with. But we've stayed on with the team that we ended last year with, uh, GT Marks. And, you know, we, we had two, uh, four podiums out of four last year, and now we've made it six out of six. So, um, continued the form from, from last season, which is uh, satisfying. And yeah, we're looking to obviously continue that all the way through the year. And we'll have Dino as a guest on the show next week as he looks ahead to his second race of the season at Silverstone. Now preparations for the new cricket season are well underway and we caught up with all-rounder Jack Taylor at the county ground as he discussed plans for the new campaign. Yeah, we're all, um, all raring to go now. I mean, everyone's, it's a pretty long winter. A few of us have been away. Uh, most of the guys have been here, so everyone's sort of getting ready to get stuck outside and get into the season. How have preparations gone and many new faces? Um, yeah, a couple of new guys. We've got a uh, Josh Shaw uh, bowler down from Yorkshire, Chris Liddles signed from Sussex and then a couple of new overseas players that arrive, I think one arrives this week. So everyone's looking good, everyone's pretty fit, so we all, all want to get stuck in now. Has the targets been talked about for, for this season? I think not so much specific. It's more. It's just an improvement on last year. So in all forms. I mean, obviously, with with the win in the 50 over, if we can replicate anything like that again, it would be fantastic. Um, T20, we want to improve and and get into the knockout stages. I think if we can do that, it's anyone's game. And then just an improvement in the four day cricket. I think we were we were hit and miss. We were either very good or very poor. So if we can if we can just sort of tweak a few things here or there and be more consistent, I think we're, we're going to have a good year. Now to the latest stadium redevelopments and seating installation has begun in the Upper West Stand. The holes are currently being drilled for the seating brackets and the process should take approximately eight weeks to complete. You'll also notice the cladding on the south side of the West Stand is almost complete, with work expected to move to the north side at the beginning of next week. From here on, the majority of the work will take place inside the stand and we'll be providing more updates in the coming weeks. 
Don't forget that all Atio, Saif and Dolman Stand season card holders can renew their seat or move. Monday marks the final week for renewals, so head to the website for more details. The Big Sports Breakfast is back at the end of the month, and this time, Eddie the Eagle Edwards will be headlining the event. Great Britain's first Olympic ski jumper and inspiration for the new Hollywood blockbuster will be coming to Ashton Gate on Friday, April the 29th, and you can book your place to hear him talk by heading to the Bristol Sport ticketing site. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Good luck to all our teams in action over the weekend. Don't forget to subscribe to Bristol Sport TV so you don't miss a minute of the action. Have a great weekend of Bristol Sport.